What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. The Democratic Party is practically over. I mean, it's so much in shambles. You've seen what happened this previous election. The whole country was practically red. And the only reason that they even got California and Illinois and New York and Colorado, which all of these places are places where it's Democratic strongholds and that they had a lot of migrant crisis and things like that is because... You know, in those urban communities, those are the places that's under duress the most. And so if you see what's happening in Chicago in particular, um, and them facing a $942 million budget deficit, trying to put the pieces together, raising the property taxes, people is getting pushed out of their homes, all of this dumb stuff that's happening, it's a reflection of what's happening at the Democratic Party at the top, right? And so I always tell people that participating in the national election is more important than participating in a local election, but in order to participate in a local election, you pretty much got to participate in the national election, right? Because there's other things on there. There's judges and, and millages and, you know, different. And for some people, there's mayoral races. You've seen what happened in London Breed over in San Francisco. But neither here nor there. You know, after the election, um, I had to pull up on Fox News in order to have this conversation about why black and and voters of color, like they like to label you, um, don't resonate with what's going on with the Democratic Party or what happened in the national election from Kamala Harris's perspective. Joining me now is Abraham Enriquez, founder and president of Bienvenido US, and Anton Daniels, a YouTuber, content creator. Abraham, let's start with you. Um, the comments about Latino men were beyond outlandish. What was it about the Democrats that Latino men didn't like? Look, Laura, on Tuesday, 46% of Hispanics went to the polls and voted for protection of the American dream, economic stability, and safety and security. And then we woke up to CNN and MSNBC telling us that we are racist and sexist. Um, I believe that President Trump gaining 46% of the vote of the Hispanic vote, making him the Republican presidential candidate with the most Hispanic support in history. It's not going to be a surprise anymore. It's going to be the new normal coming to the midterms because every single attack that mainstream media is giving on Hispanics are the great, are like the best um, ads that we can run during the midterm elections. But look, I think when Kamala Harris did her entire campaign on how President Trump is a threat to democracy, but then realizing that she herself just skipped democracy by skipping a primary and being coordinated the, 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 the candidate for a party, made a lot of Hispanics who understand the dangers of socialism and communism and how parties in no, Cuba and Venezuela ridiculous. function that way, realize yeah. they need to tilt over to the Republican Party. Now, and of course, remember what they were saying during the campaign, watch. I would actually like to put this narrative to bed, maybe forever. One place there's not going to be realignment, black men. You are not seeing shifts among black men. Please stop saying black men. The only the area supporting Trump. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's what the message, they're not going to vote. That, that, they, they downplayed all of the polls that were showing this, this shift. And they basically said that was all made up, but they believe the Des Moines Register poll. Anton. It's, it's incredible. You know, turns out that we cared less about Meg Thee Stallion, uh, Beyonce, and even Usher. And we actually cared about economic stability, wage growth, and then securing the security of our families by making sure that we get out of these proxy wars. Listen, they were so tone deaf. They were so off. We don't care about tampons and boys' bathrooms. And we surely don't care about uh, voting for reproductive rights over the security of our family. And I think that Democrats completely missed the mark by sending Obama out there to disrespect us as a final ploy to get us to the polls and vote for Kamala Harris. And we don't care about Obama or Michelle Obama telling us what to do. We can think for ourselves. And Abraham, I think this border issue was also terribly misplayed by the Democrats, not just substantively with keeping the border open, allowing millions of people in, but thinking that somehow Hispanics would think this was all great. And that Republicans wanting to enforce the border was going to drive away Hispanic voters. They've been thinking this for, since, I'm for like 20 years, by the way. I've been dealing with this issue for longer than that with the Republican Party. 
No, you're right, Laura. And you look at Star County in deep South Texas, Cameron County, and uh, Hidalgo County, three counties that are over 97 percent Hispanic populated and had been under Democrat control for 120 years. And President Trump won every single one of those counties. And they, they're, they're border districts, right? And I think that when you when you see how the Democrats turned a blind eye to the crisis at the border, these are our resources. These are our Border Patrol agents that are constantly being disrespected by this administration. Well, then it's really no surprise that, you know, South Texas came out and uh, became ruby red for President Trump this election cycle. Well, and one stop that the Democrats made frequently, various Democrats, um, during this campaign, Anton, was to um, the podcast of Charlemagne the God. It's very popular. <laughs> and he kind of jumped on to the, he jumped right onto the Kamala bandwagon and bought into a lot of the narrative. But now he's kind of singing a different tune. Watch. Don't y'all find it strange that now that he's won, they're not calling him a threat to democracy? They're not calling him a fascist. And I would think that, you know, if you really believe that, then somebody's speech would be about how America effed up and how nope. how things are about to be Charlie. really bad. It just makes you wonder how much of it, uh, did they really believe or how much of it was just politics? Anton, when I heard that, I thought, okay, that's nice. But he knew it was, you know, just garbage, right? He knew that Trump wasn't a threat to democracy. So, I mean, I'm not really buying into his, like, it's not even a mea culpa, but his critique at this point. I, I don't either. Honestly, if you really ask me if I had to put $100 on it or my life on it, I would say that Charlemagne probably voted for Trump because at every turn during this election, even though they seem to be friends, and I seen when he actually came to Detroit and they did this radiothon in order to try to get people to engage to vote for Every question that he talked about and everything that he said afterwards actually aligned with Trump. And mm. so the ideals and everything that he stands for, including what represents for us as African-Americans in this country, actually aligned with Trump. And so it seems as though he's really a plant for the Democratic Party versus actually believing in what, whatever the rhetoric yes. was that they were spilling towards black people. So that's what happened. And so those are my thoughts. Right. And and. I think that the other guy actually had some great points also. But if you even pay attention to what was going on with Barack Obama and Michelle Obama and all of these celebrities, we don't care about celebrities. We don't care what they think. They are so far removed and out of touch. And as a matter of fact, I don't even think the celebrities care about what's happening at the Democratic level because they actually just pay plants. You know, when you look at the fact that they are in the hole after raising billions, who gave them billions of dollars? That's what I'm trying to understand. Is feminism so far ingrained into these women's minds? And I'm going to do a whole nother video because uh, in the morning, you know, and then we got the, the Millionaire Morning Show and things like that. I've got sent so many videos of women now in protest, shaving their head, looking stupid, walking around in the streets in protest of the election. Well, it's dumb because you're the only person that suffer from it and nobody cares. Number two... So you think that we're supposed to completely remove ourselves from having an election, then it only matters what you think. It doesn't matter what the general population is. Y'all need to read the room or just leave. Just leave. Listen, I heard they got universal health care over in Canada. They got really high taxes. It's more socialists over there. Y'all can go over there and have a good time. Uh, be with each other, scissor kick and all of that, you know, and just participate in your own lives. But here over in America... And I'm very thankful that in my lifetime, it just hasn't gone so far left to where people are really going for men using women's bathrooms and beating them up in sports. And we had to save y'all from y'all selves because y'all didn't even know any better. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Fox News. Y'all let me know what y'all think inside of the comments. Make sure you tap into the Patreon link is in the description. Uh, also, teach Hanley 40% off your first order plus 20% off life. It's a phenomenal product. I would never tell you to rock out with something that I don't use for myself. Ladies, get it for the fellas. Fellas, don't wait for the ladies to get it for you. It's a great product. Uh, and then last but not least, make sure you get your tickets. Come and kick it with me in Detroit. Discount code Anton. That's in the description also. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.